Appease us. Amen. Today we observe the anniversary of the Augsburg Confession. More on that later. The psalmist says, In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? So when the high priest asked Jesus whether he is the Christ, the Son of God, Jesus was not afraid to give the correct answer. He was not afraid to speak the truth, even if it meant being handed over to Pilate. The psalmist says, I will speak of your testimonies before kings and shall not be put to shame. So when Pilate asked Jesus whether he is the king of the Jews, Jesus was not afraid to speak the truth, even if it meant crucifixion. Jesus said in our Holy Gospel for today, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear the one who can kill both soul and body in hell. Pilate could kill the body, but not the soul. Pilate sentenced Jesus to death by means of crucifixion, but Jesus did not fear Pilate. You see, the cross was Jesus' destination. It was his mission. It was his goal. And when he was crucified, he had you in mind. There is no other way of salvation than for Jesus to shed his innocent blood for you and for your salvation. Jesus bore the wrath of God in your place. He offered the perfect sacrifice for you and for your salvation. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead and he lives forevermore. There is now peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You were baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ. You were given the free gift of faith in Christ by water and the word. Your faith holds on to Jesus alone. Your faith looks to Christ alone as your Savior. But your faith in Christ cannot remain silent. It speaks. It sings. It confesses. I believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So first there is saving faith in Christ. Then this faith has a voice to itself. It confesses Christ in word and deed. On June 25, 1530, clergy, electors, and princes appeared before Emperor Charles V in the city of Augsburg. They presented to the emperor their confession of faith called the Augsburg Confession. It consists of 21 articles of historic Christianity, what the apostles taught regarding the Trinity and sin and Jesus and justification and law and gospel and baptism and the Lord's Supper. Also, seven articles explaining abuses in the church at that time. It basically declared that we are justified by grace through faith in Christ alone. But the emperor was not pleased. He wanted the reformers to compromise because he wanted peace in his region. So what should the reformers do? Should they remain silent or not? Should they speak out before kings or not? Should they acknowledge Christ alone as their Savior or not? George of Brandenburg declared, Rather than deny my God and suffer the word of God to be taken from me, I will kneel down and have my head struck off. Our Lutheran forefathers were prepared to die rather than to let go of the word of God. They remain faithful in the truth that our sins are forgiven freely for Christ's sake. And this message was so important, they could not remain silent. They could not compromise. It was a time to confess the truth of salvation through faith in Christ alone. And although the Augsburg Confession was written in 1530, it is our confession today. Here it is in a nice pamphlet. It is important for us even today because it is based on the Word of God and it confesses the apostolic doctrine. It clearly teaches that we are saved by God's grace through faith in Christ. You think that you are saved by what you do? This is false. You cannot save yourself. You think that you can earn God's favor? This is false. 
Because of your sinful nature, you cannot appease the wrath of God. You are filled with pride, arrogance, jealousy. You think that God owes you. You think that God forgives your sin because you are a good person and better than the person next to you. This is false. There are none righteous here on their own. No, not one. Rather, you are saved by God's grace on account of Christ. God has declared you to be righteous because of what Jesus has done. God forgives your sin because of the cross and the resurrection and the perfect sacrifice that Jesus made. Therefore, your salvation is certain, solid, and complete. You receive the forgiveness of sins through faith in Christ alone. So your faith as Christ as its object. And this is what our Lutheran forefathers confessed in the Augsburg Confession. They did not fear the emperor or the pope. Rather, they gave a faithful confession of the faith. They even risked their lives for the sake of this confession. What about you? We live in a world which is hostile to Christianity. The devil wants to take your faith in Christ away. The devil wants to destroy all that is good. The, the world makes fun of you because you hold to the word of God as your source of truth. The world laughs at you because you are baptized into Christ and because you confess Christ as your only savior. So what should you do? Should you remain silent or not? Should you speak out before kings or not? Should you acknowledge Christ as your only Savior or not? When you were confirmed, you were asked, Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? And you answered, I do, by the grace of God. And it's only by the grace of God, not by our own strength. In the midst of hostility from an unbelieving world, count it all joy, because Christ is your Savior. Christ is your light and your salvation. There is nothing or no one to fear. Christ is your strength. There is nothing to be afraid of. Nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. You are of Christ. You are his baptized lamb. By God's grace, speak the truth in love so that others may be converted and come to faith in Christ. Always remember that Christ won the victory. He paid for your sins by Christ's righteous death upon the cross, Jesus overcame death by his resurrection. The devil is defeated. In Christ there is the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. And he now feeds you with his holy body and blood. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.